Uh, good afternoon, Church. Shalom. Uh, the, the clap that you given, I think the glory belongs to the Lord. Okay, as a, uh, for me, the, my, my motto verse is, uh, let he who boasts, boast in the Lord. Amen. Okay, let me introduce myself. My name is Barry Yao. I'm 52 years old this year. Okay, 52. So, <laughs> wow, amen. Yes, because outwardly I may be fading, but inwardly I am being renewed. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, look at me, 52 years old. By the way, I'm a, um, a full time artist. Okay, full time artist. But prior to become uh, to go to full time in fine arts, I was a tattooist for more than fifteen years. So what happened was, fifty two years old, two thirds of my life is actually spent uh, behind bars. That means I have spent incarcerated, be imprisonment for more than t uh, around twenty eight years. Okay, so just now as I came in, right, very uh, <laughs> anxious. But then I also felt there's a heaviness. Heaviness that I sense that I think I want to speak to mothers. Okay, mothers. I don't know. I just feel the mothers. So for, the, for mothers here today, if there's something you, are, you have bottled up, that you felt that your children has not appreciated you or have took you for granted, I just want to let you know. All right. Uh, the Lord is with you. Every, just commit it to the Lord. All right. Amen. Okay. Uh, for myself, all right, uh, I came from a broken family. Broken family, uh, before I introduce myself with, uh, further, this is me, <laughs> okay? Uh, just now, pastor says about colorful <laughs> bodies, uh, this, is, this is me, okay? So you can imagine where uh, the appearance like this, all right, I have encountered many rejections in life, okay? Rejections in not only from the community or public, uh, even from my family, okay? Uh, at the age of nine, my, my mom and dad divorced. So what happened was that it, it badly affected me, but uh, as during that time, I was very introvert. So I do, I'm not good in expressing. So everything I bottle up. And when I bottle up, I will hide a corner every night you know, most of the night I will, I will tears and, and tear to myself. And, and at the young age, I already thought of, you know, uh, what do you call it? I, I already thought of uh, life is without a purpose at the age of nine, okay? When, when, when I was young, I, before I go to school or even nursery, I like to draw, okay? So, but as a ch young children, I... Young kid, I can't afford. I don't have money to buy stuff. So I would still took my brother's exercise book and scribble and draw. And I will always get cane. Till the extent that I dare not to draw. Okay, that, that kind of stopped for a while. Then, and because of my parents' divorce, it, I was so badly affected, right? Then everything I bottled up my, to myself. And I'm not good in expressing during that time. So what happened was, during that time, I was also uh, <coughs> badly physically or verbally abused by my mother because my father doted me the most, okay? But my, mo <laughs> my mother saw me, it's just like I'm a, a, a pain in the neck, you know, because there's a duplicate of me in my, uh, uh, my father. So I was, that everything that happens to me, all right, not just physically, but emotionally, and uh, the worst is spiritually. Okay, then at the age uh, from last time I stayed Topayo, then I moved to Amokyo. So Amokyo, I start to make new friend. So as I make new mix new friend, then I was introduced to uh, substance abuse. That is glue sniffing. So I have uh, sniffed glue for more than seven years to the extent that my whole appearance looked like I'm a jaundice sufferer. That means my eyes turn yellow, my skin turn yellow, if everything, even my nails turn yellow. But during that time, I didn't know what, what, what this was all about. So I got arrested for many times. For many times. Uh, Sometimes I went, that means police station, I went many times. To the extent my mother knows, my, by the way, my, my family, they are not, they do not know about police station. Okay, but because of me, they know every station. 
<laughs> okay, they know every station. Not only that, all right, my mom always will come and bill me. Well, uh, then what happened to my father? My father was stationed overseas, all right, in Saudi Arabia for uh, many years. So uh, I'm under my mom, my mother's care. So I will bring my mother from one police station to another, then later from one prison to another, from small institution to the big institution. That is uh, one of the reasons why my mother gave up on me. All right? uh, I do not blame her, but during that time, for, for the youth, sometimes you think that our parents will just, you know, my, uh, yeah, you all don't understand me, correct? There were times that I, I always asked myself, why, why all my friends, they have a good family and why not me? Or why did my, my, their parents are so understanding and why not me? Okay? But I think as I come to understand there's a verse that Bible says in Hebrew 11, verse 2 that, okay, it says, Jesus, the author and perfecter of our life. All right, so the author, the author actually orchestrate, the author designs, right, the character. So during that time, I do not understand. So I always blame myself. Everything I blame myself. So to the extent I was in bondage of self-condemnation, okay. Okay, I want to show you this because this is where my life turns, uh, make a turn. Okay, why 100 minus 99? Okay, after when I got into glue sniffing and slowly elevated, then I was introduced from, from glue sniffing, cannabis, uh, marijuana, then eventually to heroin. Then from heroin, I become a pharmacist. Pharmacist means I make my own cocktails. <laughs> I make my own cocktails. I learn to medicate myself. I learn to uh, inject myself. I learn to mix chemical. All right, because I want that high. Why I wanted that high? That actually, that high doesn't really give me a high. In fact, every time when I inject the needle through IV, I actually burst into tears. Actually, tears. Tears, tearing, why? Because I was in bondage, I was in self-condemnation. I don't see hope in life. There were countless times. Actually, climb up the window. I wanted to end my life. There were countless times. But every time, I climb down in defeat. In defeat, not because I, I, I can't die. You look at me, right? People look at me, you look at my appearance, you say, it's Ang Kong Xiao, right? But Ang Kong Xiao don't even have the courage to die, no. I, I came down in defeat because I don't have the courage to leave. That's the difference. Okay? So if I say, now go back to this. If I were to say everyone is an artist just now, right? Look at this light. Everyone is an artist. Will you agree? Ah. This is a question I always tell people. Why? Because if when I ask people this question, some will tell me, no, I'm not an artist. I can't paint. I can't do sculpture. I can't even do poetry. I can't even draw a decent circle. Yes, because we think that art only uh, result in all these areas. No, but you look at yourself as a piece of art. Because if every one of us, when we, do, when we make our prayer, we address our Father as our Father, and everyone knows that our Abba Father is a creator. Do you believe or do you think you, or will you agree that you inherit the DNA of creation? Right? So some will tell me, Barry, I can't paint. I don't know how to paint. I'm not good in art. I don't have the art genes. Yes, I agree. But let me ask you one, one question. When you go to a a boutique to buy a shirt for ladies. Huh? You buy a shirt, correct? Or buy a blouse. Will you take size 5, take pack and go? No, you will choose. Even for men who are busy, right? Corporate men, very busy. If you buy a long sleeve, you still will take a look and test, right? Does the color match me? Is my stomach? <clears throat> right? You will think that way. Why? And who taught you this? And after you get your shirt, right? For ladies, after you get my shirt for, for, to prepare for gala dinner, even you haven't wear your shirt, you start to think, I think my shoe must, right? You will start to think already. You start to think, oh, I need to match the colors. 
I think this shoe looks better. Maybe this heel looks nicer. Correct? So you, will you get the shoe and go? No, you still walk like catwalk. You walk like model. And who taught you this? No one taught us this. Correct? You will start to create your own. And you start after walking catwalk through and flow, then you start, I think I need to do my hair. Before you do your hair, you start, I think I have my accessories that I kept long ago. And everything start to come out, right? And you start to become aware. Why? Because we have the DNA of creation. Amen. When you look at in that context, that's why I say every one of us is an artist. Even if you're an accountant, my accountant tell me, Barry, I'm not an <laughs> artistic like you. Yes, but I am not a number person. I cannot carve out the numbers like you. By the way, I'm only premise six. Okay? So, <laughs> what can I achieve in life where my life was so broken for so many years? So, right? Since the age of nine, when I come to realize, of incarcerations after incarcerations, one brokenness after one brokenness, one rejection after one rejection. One of the encounter, okay, that one of the encounter that I remember most. I remember last time I stayed at Woodland. My neighbors, I stay on the fifth floor, my neighbors on the seventh. During lunch, lunch break, I went down to buy myself food, lunch. When I sat in the leaf, right, my neighbor's do- daughter ran in because she picked her up from school. But when she ran in, right, the mother followed. <laughs> so what happened? The mother saw me. The mother shielded the daughter in the leaf. And I was standing there doing nothing. I stand at the corner because the children came in. I have to stand in the corner. But the mother came in, shielded the daughter. She never mind. Our HDV leaf have some reflection, right? Whoa, she looked at the reflection as if something's going to happen. And this is reali- reality. Am I right to say that? Anyone anyway, was hurt. I did nothing. I said nothing. I was standing there as a lion statue, but someone did that to me. So what, have, what has happened to me? I was trying to contemplate. I can't accept. Okay? And I can't accept not because of that treatment. I can't accept why have I done to myself. All right? What have I inflicted to my own life? So, uh, that's what I mentioned. Artists create. Okay? Now we talk about everyone is artist. So what is the definition of being an artist? Ah, what is the definition? Because if you see and look at yourself as an artist, my definition is, okay, artists simply create. So what is the opposite of creating? Destroy. That's where I come to realize when I do art, I come to realize instead of creating, I have been destroying. I destroyed my life. I destroyed the trust that people gave. I destroyed my health. I destroyed my past marriage, my marriage. I destroyed literally almost everything. And I even destroyed the faith I have of God. That was me. All right? But thank God. All right? Today, again, I want to stress. If you want to listen something good about me, I say you're in the wrong place. Just how pastor said, right? Okay? There's nothing good about me. But if you want to know what has, who has done or what good has the person done in my life, the Bible says even the whole book can, the world, uh, the whole book of the world cannot even contain. Okay? That's why it says, let he who boasts, boast in the Lord. Amen. So from glue sniffing, all right, from glue sniffing elevated to cannabis, then to heroin to lost count. Don't know how many kind of cocktails, how many kind of medication I have already, all right. You, you can name it. That was my health. Okay. Then from, from Singapore Boys Home to detention barrack to drug rehabilitation center to prison. 
one prison after another. Last time for Singapore, one small tiny red dot, right? Okay, I don't know whether you all noticed. One small island from one end to another end. Like I go to China, I always tell China, the Chinese will ask me how big is Singapore. I say from one end to another, 50, 56 kilometers only. Huh? 56 kilometers. We go one place to another way, four hours. Yeah, I say, yeah, one small dot. But one small red dot, we have 17 prisons. <laughs> okay, I give you the statistic. From one small red dot, last time we have 17 prisons. We have four detention barracks. We have four Singapore children's home. Okay, we have uh, one girl's home. Then now we have more already. Okay? But now, because of this, they consolidate all into one. That's why Changi Prison. Okay? Not only, you think that it's only one. Huh? Okay, we have still have three more. Okay, the hidden prison. Uh, how do I know this? <laughs> That's why, okay, from one, one wilderness to another, to another. That's where I know all this. But is there not anything to boast about it? No, nothing to boast about it. Because prison is never a pleasant place. Okay, prison is never a pleasant place. But what is the problem? The problem is in the wilderness, in the wilderness I have to keep going back the cycle and the cycle again. That is why there were many times, countless times, I stand up on the window, I want to end my, my life. There were countless times when I inject the syringe, I, I really pray, you know, I pray that this will be my last, last not, last of the habit, last of my life. I wish I inject this, I sleep for, for good. Okay, but God's grace is sufficient for me. Amen. So from one prison, then you can see every time from, from six months, one year, 18 months, 24 months, not only I, my age increases, my sentence also increases. Okay, increases. So from my last teen, now I move forward to my last teen. My last teen was 2008. Okay, 2008, August 15. I got arrested. <coughs> Uh, for two counts of armed robbery, uh, one counts of uh, third drugs offense. All right. It, I was caught uh, when August 15. My last sentence was 10 years imprisonment, 24 strokes of eh, 18 strokes of cane. So 18 strokes of cane. Uh, no, sorry, it's 12 strokes. My total is 18 strokes of cane. Okay, for 12 strokes. So during that day, I got arrested. Uh, I remember uh, the I.O. came to me, took my statement. After he took my statement, the I.O. told me, all right, Barry, uh, get ready. Because I asked my I.O. Uh, how long this time that I need to serve. So my I.O. told me, uh, prepare yourself, okay. Uh, for robbery, one car of robbery is three to ten years. Uh, six stroke of cane. Okay, he says, my I.O. told me, prepare minimum ten years, 24 strokes. So one count of robbery is three years to ten years, six stroke of cane. Second count, same, because two counts of robbery. Then the third count for drug is minimum seven years, six stroke of cane. But if you calculate, you count the cane, is actually 18 stroke, right? But how come 24? Singapore, very unique. Because if you commit a robbery after seven o'clock, or seven o one, or seven point zero zero one second, additional six stroke of cane. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so I asked, how come only three three six? That's what my old told me. When you commit after seven zero zero one, additional six stroke of cane. Then I know, wow, that's twenty four stroke. So on that day, after that, after my statement, he brought me to the lockup. So in the lockup, uh, after the they locked me up, the the police officer left, right? Immediately I knelt down, and I prayed, for the first time, because all the while when I was in lockup, I never tear, I never, never even, right, pray or because I already uh, familiar with the cycle. So on that night, I just knelt down and prayed. So what happened was that instead of praying for life, I actually pray for death. I asked God take the life away from me. 
because I'm tired. Okay, I'm very tired. Nothing happened. So God said that night, uh, I I went to uh, for because of my withdrawal. So they sent me to Changi Prison Hospital for treatment. So the moment I walk into the, it was I remember is I uh, mean in the morning, two a, two thirty a.m. when I check in the ward. So in at the ward, when I step in, it, the first bed I saw was a gentleman. Right, his hands was crunched, half eyes half open, uh, vegetated because this gentleman actually committed suicide inside prison. But very sad, his friends saved him. <laughs> so that that at that moment, I was trying to figure it out whether is the friends the friends who save him is it for good or is it for bad? Because right. Because he's going to be like that for his, the rest of the life. Because due to the lack of oxygen, he became very vegetated. So the next day, when I asked the next uh, my friend, uh, what happened? What's going to happen to him? The, my friend told me, yes, yeah, the doctor actually prescribed an immediate release. So both of his parents came. The parents is in their seventies. The parents came, but very sad. The parents didn't took him back. Why? Because if they were to take him back. They need four thousand dollars at least to get someone just to take care of him. So when I look at that, I find that wow, you know, I was wondering and pondering when I was on my bed. This guy, he's breathing, and I'm also breathing, correct? But he don't stand a chance to walk out of prison while I still do. Amen. Then I saw something, right? Though I am still under withdrawal, but I felt I still have hope. All right. Then the when the next day I when I was on my way to the toilet, someone called me. So I saw there was my friend. There, my friend called me, called me out. Hey, very. So I went there because in under uh, custody I cannot wear glasses. So I go. Hey, hey, I saw my friend. So my friend, why are you here? So I asked my friend, and hey, why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> because we we met many occasions, so what we met, when we ask each other, this is how we greet each other, all right? Or some will say, "Hey, tios me," or "Chipai, lock tios me." So it's just like very common, you know. <laughs> so when I talk, to, I went to tell my friend, I in a very boastful tone. I ask, I answer my friend in a very boast, boastful tone, all right? I say, "Hey, xia chipai xie jia la liao lei." You know why? Because I say my eye will uh, tell me. Minimum ten years, twenty-four stroke, right? So I tired of boastful in you know, in my tone. So when I ask my friend, "What about you?" My friend says that word actually brought me to ground. I don't stand a chance to walk out of prison anymore. And true enough, nine and a half years later, he got sentenced to death because of drug trafficking. All right, I attended his wake also. All right, so that word kind of gave me a a solid punch that woke me up. All right, when I went back, because the moment you tell me I don't stand a chance to walk out of prison anymore, it's just like a patient, a person who tell you, the doctor told me I left one week, so I lost my words. I do not know how to comfort him. I only just says, "Hang loose." I went back to my bunk and my bed. I keep pondering and start to look around. All right, look around. This, there are people who are breathing, but they don't stand a chance, or they don't have a hope to walk out of prison. So I saw myself, you know, at least I ten years ah, uh, I then my whole perspective change. I I see that if I were to hang on for ten years, how am I going to walk out of prison? Who, what kind of person do I want to walk out of prison? So I see hope. All right. And remember, just now I mentioned I prayed for death, right? God is very unique. He brought me to that cemetery three days after I released. I was discharged from the hospital. So I, when I reached, uh, when I went back to the lockup, I look at, reflect back, all right, for what happened to the past few three days. It's just like going through the death for three days. I walked through the human cemetery. Then I start to see, 
Then when I went, <laughs> the same lockup, alone, again, this time I knelt down and prayed. But this time I don't pray for death anymore. <laughs> I pray for a life. I pray for a life. I pray for a transformed life. I pray that, you know, God, you need to, since you give me that life, you know, that breath that you have given me, all right? Because that, that breath very significant when in, at that moment. Because the past three days I've been looking around, everyone is breathing, but they don't stand a chance of living, all right? Well, I still have. So I told God that at that moment, you give me that life, let that breath return to you in worship and in praise. Amen. Okay. <coughs> so I served my sentence. Uh, by the grace of God, two counts of armed robbery, uh, the, <laughs> the court put, set aside one as <laughs> under taking into consideration. So I got sentenced to 12 year, uh, 10 years, 12 strokes of cane instead of the 10 years, 24. So they took away the, the, the 12 stroke one. Uh, then after that, I embarked or began my uh, journey inside prison. So what happened? I, s I began to uh, 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 what I got? study the Bible. I began to reflect on life again. But last time, every time when I, was, I went in prison, did, did, didn't, I wanted a change. But the change is always only a superficial. The change is only a while, all right? trying to change myself, but, at, at, uh, but I find that it's, it's all about my own strength. Then uh, when I embark on my journey inside prison, I, I began to serve my sentence. So as I serve my sentence, okay, I start to uh, go in depth through the Bible. I start to read. And every time I read, I see new things. Okay, I see new things. N last time I read the Bible, I see only... <laughs> Things that tremble me, things that make me feel that, you know, I'm not worthy, right? Not worthy. Things that always, when I last time when I read the Bible, I always think that I think I don't stand a chance. I don't think I I can reach that level. Till that's where, till the extent, I gave up my my hope, All right? But after this, the last thing it was different, All right? The last thing when I restart to look at the. Uh, the goodness of God, the promises of God, what God has, what God says in His Word. Then I challenge myself, are you sure? You know, there were times I always I will ask myself because the Bible says, there's one part I remember, it says, what the locust has eaten, I will return you double. I say, God, the locust has even eaten my 30 over years for, because they, during the time I went in prison was 42 years old. I said, the locust has eaten 40 over years of my life. How are you going to return me it double again? That means I'm going to live until 120. <laughs> All right. There were many times that God says, I will feed. You look at the birds in the sky. All right. All right. Look at the birds. Then prison, bow birds, ma. <laughs> Right. So I try to visualize. The only bird I find is in the magazine. So I start to look for birds. Right. Look at the lilies. Last time, I'm not that kind of person. Look at lilies. Right. So I start to reflect. I start to look at, you know, when inside, uh, we have people, who family who came, they bring magazines. So I start to look for all this. I start to look at creations. I start to look at God's creation. Then I start to see I see new things. I start to, when the moment, the more I see, the more I see myself small because compared to creation, right? Okay. Then, <laughs> so what happened? I served my terms and well, every time when I go in prison, I have a whole lot of, because I'm active in gangs during that time. Before, uh, for many years, very active in gangs, involved in many fights. I think there are a couple of cuts over here. So people always ask, hey, what, have, what is your cut for? I say, if you have coins, huh, you slot it in, I will sing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have all these cuts around, okay? A lot of okay, <laughs> injuries before, okay? Uh, <laughs> uh, then uh, during that time, all right, uh, the past few uh, incarcerations, my family never came and visited me. Well, they gave up. 
not even my brothers. I want the so-called gangs that I was in very active in. Outside Wakao Kwa we did one. Alright. So only inside. So for us who are in that kind in these directions, uh, the in the dar directions of our darkness, I always tell them, all right. You want to find me again? Three places you can find me. Okay. First one, if it's not in IMH, you can find me in prison. If it's not in prison, you find me in mortuary. All right. That was us. Many of my friends end up in these three places. So I'm not. I'm one of them. So I end up one only. I haven't gone to IMH. <laughs> all right. So what happened was that I, I began when I went in. I have a lot, whole lot of gangs, man, gang members, okay. But when I decided to make a stand, right, because I know I do not belong to prison anymore, okay. Last time, those people who who are in my gang, okay, who are in my gang, right, they if they go to convert or go to Christian counseling, I will kick them out from our room, right. But then now, the <laughs> wall. <laughs> when I decided to make my stand right, okay, they tell me, oh, yeah, you can attend your counseling, you can become your Christian, don't influence us, you know, you see. But then, though in the same room, but topic different already, correct? Because if they are in a gang, they will talk about gangs. If they are in the drug, they will talk about drugs. That's what I learned. Every time I go into prison, my network expanded. <laughs> Okay, people talk about network is net worth, so my network expanded. So I have my, my network, uh, my, my web of network very broad. But the problem is the network always ent entangled me. Yeah. So what happened? I decided to make my turn, but then because different topic already, until they one fine day, they tell me, I think Barry, I think you move out from the room. Well, that was another rejection. All right. And how do I, when I move out that room, inside prison is different, huh? the, okay, because it is a gang, a uh, gang, what do you call it, a gangster or institution, okay, the officer will not find a room for you. He will ask you, go and find your own room. Okay, they have a reasons for that, okay, because if they were to allocate a room, right, then what if the room is your rivalry, then you end up, get bullied or you get killed. So they do not want to answer. So I give you the chance. You go and look for your room. Look for people where you think you can accommodate. On. Okay. So what happened was that in prison, the small community is the same. Okay. The stigma also comes from among the prisoners. Okay. So when I have to ask, can I come to your room? You know, I have to take a lot of pride to swallow that. Right? And no, everyone say no. Right? And it's really... <coughs> Painful during that time. So at night I was crying, no? I was telling I was telling God, right, God. So Pai say can call eh. Alright. Uh, because if I were to become bad, I have to keep coming back. Now I want to become good. Alright. So ho also lucky can call eh. Right. Then I have to come to one point to make a decision. I I ho I say so pai. Right. Then I tell myself, yeah, I start to see. Okay, I have start to see. What's so high? Three places I'll go. But what's so holy? I have smile. Right? I can I have peace. So I choose, I never turn back the from that prayer that I have made when I was in police station. Then at the last day, the the person who in my room was in my room gave me the last day only. Okay, the deadline eh, to move out. So, no one wants to accept me. Suddenly, the deadline, morning I went to work. Right, I decided if during lunchtime, no one accept me, I'm going to tell the officer, put me into punishment cell. Right, I'd rather be alone. Then, at the last minute, someone came to me. Hey, you need a room? Come to my room. <laughs> okay, and the person is, Bolang <laughs> Ayon. <laughs> okay, that's what they say. Uh, birds of same feathers will flock together. Bolang I okay, I what I right? <laughs> because uh, during that time, but after that that incident, right? Okay, I sense blessings start flowing. Okay, I have to go through that, that moment. Okay, I uh, when I I was in that room, then after that, 
Okay, the yellow prison has this yellow ribbon art competition. So I participated to distract the pastime. I participated. So because why? When those who participate can come out on weekends to paint uh, pastime. Okay. So I change I draw the paint, then I submit. Submit, uh, sway, sway, I got selected. <laughs> <laughs> I got selected. Selected, never mind, my OC came, congrats me. Hey, very congratulations, right? You have been selected for the finals. Huh? I say finals. So what was coming next? We're going to transfer you to the, the institution that has uh, it's a, it's an art environment. Whoa. From the, <laughs> the breeding ground of gangsters to in institution to art. So, whoa. you ask, yeah, you want to go? I say one. <laughs> I surely one because I, I, I love that place. All right? But I go. So when I went, all right, on the exhibition, uh, what do you call results came, we have to go down and meet right, the, the judges. Uh, and the judges are from Singapore Art Museum, National Art Council. Uh, okay. So I, my art got special mention and I got an award for that. Huh? Ching Chai Draw, Tikam Tikam, I got an award. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Okay, I got an award. Not only that, all right, the superintendent of the institution all right, invited me. I'm going to bring you here all right, to uh, attend the basic art course. Do you want it? I said, yes, I want. So that's where I embarked on my art journey. Okay, so I attended, selected, specially selected, attended the uh, tw uh, 24 lessons basic art course. That means 24 basic crash course. Five lessons of pencil sketching, gesture, posting. Last time I don't know <laughs> all this. So I go there, everything, you know, I just just feel different. Because in prison, you, what you see, the color, the, the attire is white t shirt and blue pants, right? Those are who knows about it. And the wall is all gray, nothing else. Just like the same color of the chair, gray. So you, these are the colors that I see, all right? You don't see birds, by the way. Because it's all confined. All right. So when I start to uh, attend the course, right, I sense like a sponge. Wow, everything I absorb very fast. You see? Uh, so my f uh, then after my pencil will be my color, watercolor. Three, three lessons of watercolor. I remember the first day when I attended the basic art course, my teacher asked one by one. Okay, my art lecturer, lecturer asked one by one, why do you want to outdo art? Okay, what can art do to you or why? You, you know, he keep asking one by one. So when he come to me, I just say, I just want to excel in art. That's all. So when I did my first watercolor assignment, uh, first homework, uh, right? When the teach, uh, by the way, that, that first assignment, I painted Swenson. One bird. <laughs> Okay, one banana split and one orange. <laughs> so the moment my art lecturer saw their painting, right? Hey, he said, Barry, I want to buy this art. Wow, you wow, I lucky one, you know? Why? <laughs> because my my art lecturer is he lecture in NAFA, Nanyang Academy of Fine Arts. He he's a, he teach oil painting, he teach still life, right? And he lectured in, in NAFA. That just now, you are, I lucky you are. <laughs> right. Are you trying to flatter me? Correct. You, you are the one who teach me fine arts, no? And you want to collect my painting. Oh, I cannot think, connect, cannot contemplate, no? Right. For one week, I went back. Because we only see him once a week. So the next week came, when I first saw him, I said, can I call, talk to you, put in... Private, so I say, uh, some more I say, you teach me all this, this, this. Why you want to buy my art? I just need the answer, right? Then you know what I say. I don't know. I just see something in your art, huh? Then I go back. I cannot go on that plate. <laughs> Maybe my my burger, my beef, <laughs> fatty, more juicy. Oh man. <laughs> 
I don't know, right? So, but I cannot contemplate on that. You see? But he says, I see something in your art. From that day, it was one of the... Uh, it's, it's just like, I take it as a prophecy. I say amen to you. Because my art lecturer is a Christian. I just met him only in uh, Gilman Barrack. <laughs> Alright? I say amen to that. So, I have suddenly I have felt there's the, a conviction that I want to become an artist. Okay? I told us I want to become an artist. So that's where oh, I start to really go into art. But then because inside a confined area, we do not have references. The only reference that I have are our books, art books. And the art books are generations ago. On, okay? But to me, it's gold. Yeah, it's gems. So I see, oh, I read a lot. All right? Sometimes I read so thick, but I only understand one verse. <laughs> I don't know about art lingo, art jargon. What is this? What is that? All right. So I so don't know. Just felt that when I read when I read Monet, so thick, the, his biography, but then one part inspired me, right? That that when Monet, uh, his wife was sick, his children were hungry, right? So Monet was, you know, he was broke. So he went to his collector and asked for money in advance, right, for to to get, to get the money. So the moment he got the money, as an as a human, I think I will pay for medical bills. I will pay for my children's food. But Monet didn't. He bought canvas. Did he, right? So I think hey, this guy see already, right? He go and buy canvas. This is how passionate he was. That whole one whole book, this portion inspired me. So he's so convicted, so hungry. Then I said, Oh, I want to be not Monet, lah, of course. But right, but the spirit of the, the the artist. So is it easy to become an artist? I tell myself, oh, it's not easy. Why? Because I know there's this constant challenge or struggles. During that time, I was so convicted. One part of me, I want to become an artist. But on the other hand, there's this always struggle coming in. Why? The struggle comes between reality against the uncertainty. Reality, all right. Well, I want to become an artist. Uncertainty, can you survive? Who's going to buy your painting? If I come back from Iraq holding a machine gun fight ISIS, maybe people will buy my painting. They will... I come, I also appear in newspaper, right? Robbery one. <laughs> then you think, right, who wants to buy your painting? <laughs> if I come back while well, holding a machine gun Singapore flag, maybe people honour me, right? Like Joseph Schooling. That's different. Joseph Schooling, it says the Chai Tao Kui nice. Everyone flock to the Chai Tao Kui. <laughs> Great. But for me, <laughs> 20 over years in incarcerations, who will want to bother? That was my struggle. Right. But where's my answer? My answer is in the Bible. Look at the birds. I never go and find all those. I only see, look at the birds. Then I start to paint birds. Look at the flowers. Then I start to paint the flowers. All right. Look at creations. Then I understand nature is the voice of God. Creation is the voice of God. Sometimes we are in doubt. Sometimes we are in a point that confusion. Look at creation. Don't. Look at the words. Alright. Then I understand. Nature is the voice of God. Creation is the voice of God. That's what helps me or leads me to understand. I'm not a prayerful, like long prayer, like pastor, I say power, I'll be here. Why, Balu, he help praise me if I'm in confusion every time when I was in prison. I say, God, you put me into this art, right, institution. You bring me out from this Red Sea. This is what my prayer always, and it always worked. Like. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it always works. Okay? It always works. Why I say that? Because now I'm a gallery owner. 
，所以我很彪的嘞，对不？卖<笑>看卡了，卖骗去，对不 ？Right， but look at the views 啊，做呢嘞 ，Right， 未使欠的，拉塞未使欠政府嘞，那 Star Hub 唔卖欠嘞，对不？啊、uh, ， when I pay bills， you know right， every time my my prayer is God 啊。你袂讲我死个嘞，对无 ？And he always work 嘞。That's why 我都打很到四年贵了嘞。Ever since I came until today, right? My 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 full time art journey. By by the way, I came out 2015, April 22nd. Four years plus until today. All right. 唔怕收一张红单嘞。Amen. Oh. <laughs> okay, four and a half years till today, I never receive a red, what, red color bill, ah, huh? or warning letter. This is how God has fed me throughout. Okay, look at me, six primary six. I'm not Nafa trained. I'm not LaSalle trained. I do not have academic credentials. I do not have savings. How can I do it? Let him who boasts boasts in the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So what happened <coughs> as I go through my my art practice inside prison, 2011, right? Then one fine day, you know, every time because it's a, it's a it's a art institution, so we always will have galleries or owner, right? Or we have people who are in the art industry or curators or people from uh, National Council Singapore Art Museum, who always come. So every time they come, the OC will tell, "Hey, get ready all your painting." So every time I will get ready, well, all my gundu one, uh, the nice one, I put in front. I think, right. So everything I want to boast about myself. Okay. Then one fine day, when I, uh, <laughs> when I want to to always talk, of, well, I want to display all my painting, right to to showcase my talent, okay? I remember uh, I, I painted one Maggie noodles. <laughs> I paint a lot of food, uh, by the way. You know, la, <laughs> 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 okay, uh, I paint a lot of food series, all right? My, 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 when I paint food series, everyone laugh at me, okay? Everyone laugh at me. You know why? Uh, because they say that, wow, you yao kui or what? You hungry or what? You, you not enough or what? <laughs> so I always paint. Why I paint food? Because I see where you, I start to paint food. It's just like, you know, start, when you do cooking, uh, for mother, uh, your cooking, you will choose the best one, your style, your color combination. I start to learn all this, right? So when I do painting, I learn all this. Okay, so one day I paint an uh, uh, instant noodles. Then when I paint the instant noodles, my OC came, you know, the moment because the last yesterday was the day for prison. Uh, every month or end of the month, there's one meal is instant noodle. <laughs> okay, why? Because they have to close the kitchen for washing. Ah, uh, so they give instant noodles the best one, uh, and they say this is a healthy food. <laughs> yeah, if you happen to visit prison, they'll tell you uh, our food are actually planned by nutritionists. <laughs> okay, nutritionists. That means it's right, recognized one. Huh? So the instant noodles is one of the meal. That is lunch huh, for, you, for your information. When what is dinner during that day? Ah, during that day is stomach muscle. You know what stomach muscle? You saw the six buns, the six pack buns. <laughs> We call that a stomach muscle bun. All right, uh, that's our dinner for that day only. Okay, so that day when uh, the instant noodle came, okay, w during that, that day, I don't know why that Sunday I woke up was very heavy. I felt, you know, then inside it's stuffy and hot. So what happened was that they served the instant noodles. Uh, the housing unit consists of 39 cells. Okay, then if you are Lucky enough, they serve hot water the first room. Okay? 
That means we do not have access to go and collect hot water, boil water to cook our instant noodles. So that day, very lame, I kena the 39 cell. <laughs> so the more, the, when they come, the, the person who, the domestic, what they call it, we call the domestic helper. La. They come and distribute the instant noodles, right? Okay, then <laughs> but the, when I see the instant noodles, you have to put into a box, right? Okay, the lunch box. Then I see the instant noodles, I almost burst into tears. You know why? Because the instant noodles, basic, white color one, the wrapper, no brand one. Then you don't know what flavor. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, I remember, la, there's a brand. La. There's a brand, a small brand down at the corner, Hala certified. <laughs> <laughs> so when I saw that, Hala, <laughs> I almost burst into tears. You know, I don't know what brand. So we, we unwrap the instant noodles, right? The noodles, the wrapper, also no, no brand on. You see? So we prepare our lunch. Then happen that. Then we'll pick up. You know, we'll look, see where, which room go first. Then happen, wow, well, if start from that room, this is the last room. So when the last room came, you can imagine the water is lukewarm. Then, my chia go wayside. Right. So the moment I saw that, wow, I start to like, I almost want to tear already. Then inside prison, you know, like, oh, I'm going to one. Right. Okay. Deep within is broken. But outside, I also have to pretend, at, as you see, it's tough, very tough. So I just tell my roommate, I go to the toilet first. The weather very stuffy. I go shower. But inside the toilet, I start crying already. You know why? Because I start to see flashes, flashes of. Oh, I remember last time when I used to come home late, my mom would op open the door. Are you hungry? Mama, cook noodles for you. Wow, that one, cow go ga chia la. Right, so I tell, then come out and pretend, okay. So the whole day I was trying to reflect, right? Start to reflect why like that, you know? Start to see that, that whole scenario again. Then what happened? That night I tell my roommate, uh, I want to sleep early. So I roll my t-shirt, right, lie down, cover my, my eyes, but actually lying down, tearing, tearing, right. Uh, how come my life is like that? You see? So for us, then I decided, well, tomorrow I go up to my VAH, uh, visual art hub. I want to paint instant noodles to memorize this moment. So, but for us, when we paint something, we need to write the synopsis. Then the problem is synopsis. What primary sex? What we all see are already, right? <laughs> so what to do? <laughs> that's hard to think. What to write? Then I find that okay, that's what I found the word. I, I last at last I wrote, all right? That for that instant noodles I wrote. Life is not about living well, but rather it's in the substance of life well lived. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I wrote. All right. So the moment oh, I go, the next day, next morning, I, I bring up my brush straight. I start to paint the instant noodle. So when I start to paint, everyone pass by. I start to. Sell it, Jawe They start to tell me, the Jawe cows you. <laughs> Even my OC came. Hey, Mary, you what? You starving again or what? <laughs> then who's going to buy this painting? You know, but when I painted, it took me uh, half a day to paint that watercolor. So after I painted, well, I put at my, because in, in my, my place, I, I put at the price one to remember that this is, this is what happened. But no one knows about it. Right, so a few days later, uh, a group of people from Singapore Museum and National Council came. They they, the moment they walk in, they saw the instant noodles. <laughs> they say, Can you tell me about your instant noodles? That's why I told them about. Then I told them the synopsis life is not about living well, but rather in the substance of life well lived. Because I see my life, right? No flavor, 
right? No flavor. Missing chip. And I painted a missing chip. Then they asked me, why is the missing chip? I say, my life, a big chunk of it has been missed. No completion in my life. This is reality. But it doesn't matter because it lies. Maggie, me, comes when you... No taste, right? But you put the substance, ama, more taste coming out already. That's what the flavor is all about. That's what I understand. Then the mo- when they heard about this, immediately one of the directors of Singapore Art Museum bought over the painting. <laughs> <laughs> when he bought over only, my OC came already. Barry, can you paint a few more of this? <laughs> what la? <laughs> That's reality, right? The moment he came, he started to, can you paint a few more of this from one small painting? Right? It become bigger and bigger just to paint food. <laughs> we no longer people talk about getting hungry, right? But it's all by the grace of God. So what happened? Uh, after that incident, my whole perspective changed. So how it changed? One fine night, I think I embarked my journey one and a half years. Okay. Suddenly one night I had a dream. I dreamt of myself appearing on newspaper, holding a brush. Then I, oh, I woke up like stunned. Then I went to tell my roommate, hey, last night I have a dream, no? I dreamt myself appear newspaper. I saw the tagline from strange to brush. All right. My friend all laughed. He said, yeah, good to have dreams. <laughs> 做梦是很好, <laughs> yeah, he said, good to have dreams, but don't daydream. You know, that was my... F- okay, the answers I got from my friend. Then what happened? Two days later, I went to tell my lecturer. Remember the one who bought my painting? I told him. I said, Lao Si, I had a dream. I dreamt of myself appearing on newspaper. My Lao Si told me, in my life, okay, in my entire life, he was the pers- first person who tell me, God give dreams. Be serious with your dream and God has a purpose for you. Oh, I like, for 48 years of my life, no one ever tell me dream can become reality. Not even my mother, not even my family, but my teacher. But I want confirmation, Matthew. So I went to a tank counseling. Right, I have a, a Christian mentor. I went to tell my mentor, hey, I had the dream, no? Last, he said, what you dream? I said, I dream myself appearing in newspaper. Huh? He said, good, very. God gave Joseph dreams. And if God gave Joseph dream, God bring the dreams into pass. And if God can bring Joseph's dreams into past, God can bring your dreams into past. Amen? So from that moment, my whole perspective changed already. No more showcasing. No more want to show people war. Right? But I know my art carries a purpose. So what happened? Every time visitors come, everyone show their artwork. I don't show until my OC come, hey, where's all your painting? Oh, not ready. <laughs> How come not ready? Because I, in my heart, I'm not there to showcase because the glory is not mine. Right? Then I will challenge myself, does, does art carry a purpose? Then I say, what is the purpose in doing art? The first purpose I saw, artists create, not destroy. Second purpose, does art carries a purpose? Yes. Art carries purpose to direct to Him, the Creator, who created us and also gave us the eDNA in right of creation and gave us the authority to create, gave us the power even to create, not to destroy. So it changed my whole perspective. Then I know what is my purpose then at that time. My purpose is to equip myself to learn. Then I start doing. So when I start doing, during my three and a half years inside prison, I, I did thousands of work of painting. Uh. That's how, 
how serious I am, I was, right? Then I, <coughs> three and a half years, I sold almost 600 over commission works. All right. 600, yeah, people, wow, right? But then <laughs> inside, people will, will tell me, hey, why don't you tell the OC, give you some percentage? All right. Then I say, no. Whatever I have, right, God will provide. Whatever I'm doing now, correct, it has a purpose. It has a bigger purpose, not a small percentage. So I just produce, produce and learn. And every time I produce, I see myself grounded. I see myself smaller. I see myself right, small so that my God can become big. Amen. All right? Then, <coughs> when I tell my friend I have this dream, they laugh. This is reality. Why? Because they know I have no visit. I have no savings. I have no academic credential. I have absolutely nothing. Right? I don't even know where to stay. So during that time, I would move a bit faster. I sleep in my room. I sleep in front of me. It's a door. So every time I look at the door, I felt heavy, I felt sad. You know why? Because artists start to visualize, start to right, think, see things. So I see what happened if one day the officer will take his key, unlock, okay, Barry, you're allowed to go. Alamak, where can I go? Where can I go? During Mother's Day, one occasion, I, it, for so many years, I never write even a Mother's Day card, eh? To my mother, first time in my life, oh, I took up some of the courage I wrote. I wrote to my mother, tell her how sorry, how remorseful I am. Right? But then, you know what's my ending? Mama, What the moment I put full stop, I was crying, no? Really crying, no? For first night, wow. That was something that bottled up in my life for many years that I never want to acknowledge. But through the letter, I posted up. Two weeks later, wow, we have postmen bringing letters. The officers bringing letters. Wow, you see letters. Luna. Then my number was called up. Wow, that means you hope, right? My mother may reply. Ma. Wow, chiong, ah. go and collect letter. Eh. The letter came back. Rejected. Because why? Address Bo Liao. Ah, another di <laughs> disappointment, right? <laughs> Sitting there wondering. That's where I always say, what if the officer unlock the door and tell me, you are free to go? Where can I go? Where can I go? That was me throughout the whole prison yeah. sentence. Where can I go? Right? God is my shelter. Amen. Then, uh, I remember when, when I almost come uh, out already, every time, every year we have exhibition. Okay? And my art exhibited in Singapore Museum through Yellow Ribbon for four years. All right. So the, the chairman will come, the minister will come, well, congratulations, we love your work, we love this. So before my, for throughout the years, they know I have no visit, nothing, uh, right? So my, my last exhibition, two few more months going out, the chairman every time come, oh, you, you know, they very supportive. But when they ask me, oh, Barry, I heard you're going out, congratulations. Uh, what are you going to do outside? I said, I want to become an artist. Huh? How are you going to do that? Who's going to help you? Are you going to La Salle? I said, I don't even have a shelter. How to go La Salle? <laughs> right. Okay, prison came twice to me, offering me bursary. Okay? First was to get a diploma. Second bursary they offer is as far as you can go. Wow. Everyone say wow. I also wow. But my wow become <laughs> I cannot because I have no shelter. I don't even have saving. How am I going to go for all this? Right? There's always reality against the uncertainty. Correct? So, how can I become an artist? I tell myself, are you sure? There were many times, oh, many times there's this struggle throughout my art journey. 
But each time my answer is found in the Bible. Look at the birds. What the locust has eaten, I will return you double. Right? What your hurt it is right now, God can heal you. Right? You think you are swallowing for mommy or children or adult or youth, especially mommy, huh? Alright. Sang Pai Tun is similar, sorry. Msi de tole. Sang Pai Tun is tears. Agree? For fathers. Yeah, whoa. Sang Pai Tun, the hardest thing to swallow is not not de to, no? Not the bleach. Tears. Sang Pai Tun. Right. There was many times I want to tear in front of me. Luna. <laughs> Luna. Right. That was me uh, throughout the whole journey. They understand. Oh, but God counts your tears. God knows your tears. Amen. So there were times I want to stand, came up. When I came up, actually, I came up with nothing. Okay. I cannot say nothing, uh, by the way. Okay. By the grace of the government, I came up 2,000 plus. Plus you know why? Throughout 10 years in incarceration, right? Government bless us, GST they give away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ESS la, plus this, plus that. La. Okay, <coughs> government bless me. So with that 2000 right, I use that all right, to pay my rental when I came out. Uh, one plus one, I rented a, a place. I stay in an Indian Indian house, uh, six hundred per month with a deposit, so one thousand two. Then what about the rest? Oh, at that time also struggle already. Why struggle? Two thousand plus. How am I gonna survive? How am I gonna survive? Tio, oh. that time I stay Chong Pang. I remember. Oh, then besides attend church, besides going to do my art, don't even <laughs> have money to buy art supply. Right. By the grace of my art mentor, he brought me to art shop. <laughs> okay, Barry, this is your playground. Choose what you want. Oh, choose what I want. Ooh, I see already, I choose the cheapest one. Uh. Right. You want to use, I think this one can, uh, budget. Uh. Right. When I came out, I remember he brought me to Uniqlo. I only buy two shirts. Uh. Two shirts and one long pants. Because why? I need to report urine tests. So urine test cannot wear like that one. So I have to wear long sleeve opium. Buy two shirt. Two t shirt I remember. Okay. Then I came out of prison. I don't even have a decent sleeper to walk out. So what changed me? Hey Barry, my lock my wardrobe oh, have this, this, this you cannot. Cannot cow. Oh. Alright. Everything people bless me on and I keep. Some still with me today. I still wear it. I never forget. Right. Hey, I have this cap you want. One. Anything you give me. Or second hand one. I take. Alright. I remember every time go to CG, after work go to CG, and I come back. Oh, I want to take feeder bus. Hey, beside I have to save. I will walk back. So if people thought the wow, oh, you very successful. No, they forgot huh, how I gone through. Not successful. Eleven plus, very tired from CG, come back, right? Buchi up for toy young. Want to take feeder bus? Save up a bit. Uh. Walk. Walk until home. Uh, it's all sweat again. Then I tell myself, walk as exercise. <laughs> walk and exercise. <laughs> right. So, then how I survived this? All right. For first six months. My, my mentor says, we place you under our company. All right. We pay you. Pay you to do art. But what you sow is yours. Whoa. Then also got struggle. How come no struggle? People pay me, become a responsibility, right? Then who gonna buy the painting? Hide in the studio, who gonna know you? Dear who gonna know you? Wow, there's also a struggle at like this reality, right? Then as I pray, huh? When I pray, right, as always I'm on the worship song, right? So I pray. Then True enough, one and a half months later, the Straits time came. August 28, uh, June 28, not August. All right, the straight time came. One and a half months only. So what happened? The Straits time came. Okay? 
that day was very significant. That day what happened? Oh, quite no time already. I, I fast forward. Huh? Okay. Oh, can't chong now. Okay. Uh, don't know. I check with your pastor first. Uh, pastor say like that. Then I cut already. Uh. <laughs> Part two. Next celebrity. Next year one. Then I come again. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so what happened this day? The morning I remember. Wow. I go shower. Right. Uh, I remember during the interview, okay, the this editor was the uh, editor of the year. Oh, okay, Wong Kim Ho is a award winner, editor of the year of Straits Time, yeah, editor. So the the moment he came and did the interview, the first thing he he asked was not, "Whoa, I see your art, no? How long have you been released?" That was his first question. Then I told him, "I want to tell him uh, also Paisi, eh. okay." I released one and a half months only. He laughed. He laughed. One and a half months. He said, Barry, straight time usually don't carry this kind of story, you know. He said, let me explain. First, if today I write your letter, tomorrow publicize, next week you go back to prison. <laughs> then how am I going to tell people? <laughs> <laughs> this is another reality, you know. Correct. But uh, I thought, oh, I said, thank you, gracefully. But he says, no. I see your painting. I like your painting. Immediately, he commissioned me one painting. Then, let me listen to your story. So this is what I shared with him. It's what I shared just now. After sharing, he said, uh, I really don't know, but I'm very inspired by your... I'm very touched by your story. Let me see what I can do. He said, let me see. No promise, huh? So he went. 3.30, he left. 5.45, I remember. I was at a coffee shop ordering food. Straits time call. Hello, Mr. Barry Yao. Can we make an appointment? We need to do a video shoot of you. Huh? Oh, I said like, we are <laughs> Right. True enough, three and a half weeks later, the paper was published. And what happened? When the, when the paper was published, morning I was showering, about to go to church, a phone, my phone rang. The number Mpakuan. Right? I don't know who called. Sky, the moment I answer, I burst into tears. I burst into tears. Inside the toilet, I was bursting into tears. Why? My mother called. <laughs> my mother called, huh? oh, I straight I burst like machine gun already. You know why? I start because it did when I was in prison, I remember. All right, the Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 16. All right, pray if you all right, pray for one another, right? All right, so that you may be healed. Correct, confess your sins to one another so that you may be healed. So, not only I want to be healed, I want my mother to be healed. So, the moment I heard his, his, her voice, I keep telling her, Sorry, sorry, sorry. But my story is my so sorry is not one stroke settle all. Huh? It's one by one detail one. I tell Mama, remember the time you cooked Maggie for me? Instead of saying thank you, I murmur, sorry. There were times from one prison to another that you have to lose your sleep. You have to lose, lose all your inconvenience just for me. Mama, I'm sorry. Remember the disappointment that I've caused to you for all my failures? I'm sorry. Remember, one by sorry, 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 until uh, my mom said, Stop. <laughs> <laughs> she said, You listen to me now. This is what my mom says. She says, Son, my mom is leaving or breathing today. I read your article this morning, and this is the best gift you have given me. And I'm very proud of you for 48 years in my life. First time, my mom tell me, I am proud of you. That day, I, when she said that, right, my tears even oh, burst out. <laughs> right, but the tears of pain become the tears of joy, the tears of healing, the tears of peace, the tears of reconciliation. That day marks another milestone of change in my life. So while going to church, right, 
I remember uh, attended two church last time that July, very on fire. One, uh. So morning go, Pastor Reese there, Pentecost Methodist. All right, so go to Pentecost. Then Pentecost Methodist is next to market only. The coffee shop, right, surrounding our coffee shop. So I went, wow, suddenly I received a WhatsApp text. The text bokong make one, only one photograph only. It was sent by my brother, showing my niece and my sister-in-law reading the article. Wow, now I see that one. <laughs> then you know what? Jialat, uh, in market, right? The coffee shop. Oh, I see this. Then what happened? I go to church like that, uh, by the way. So Ang Kong Xiao, in the market, 10 plus early in the morning. Then what happened? When I keep crying, I cannot control action. Uh, the sand go into my eyes. <laughs> uh, right, I have to pretend, no? but I cannot control. Then I decided, you know what I do? I decided to let go. I cried all the way to the pulpit, to the pew in the church. Then the church, everyone looking at me in the morning because Methodist very quiet one. Ma. So, early, <laughs> so early in the morning at the pew, right, everyone sitting, all the uncle, auntie, right? They see, wow, this guy come in tears, huh? Um, wow, very touched already, you know. People thought I right, got, got slain. Or, wow, come in, uh, keep hearing, no? Sitting there, wow, can I keep outside? That was me. I decided to let go. Okay, that day, that day marks the day I received my PhD. Okay, I received my PhD in life. I was pardoned, I was healed. And I was delivered. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so, after the, not only that, uh, after the, this paper was published, right, orders start pouring in. That was 2015. Huh? Now 2019. Till today, my order got so well. Till today, uh. and last night only start counting. Uh. Wow, I still at, at least nine orders we told eh. and one order is to ban the song too. No lah, all right. If I want to boast, boast in the Lord. Uh. Correct. Look at the birds. Look at the birds in the sky. There's nothing to boast about me. So when I start, I do my art. Uh, is it about all orders? Six months, three months before, uh, after when I embarked my journey outside, right? One fine day, because my mentor is a videography, ma, so he, he has video shooting studio. So he let me use his place for six months. Six months got struggle, got ma. Hey, after that, six months, and look on. How? Correct. So one fine day, when I was paying me, wow, he told me, hey, Barry, keep going on. One fine day, you will have your studio. Wow, I say, one fine day. Then I say, okay, uh, I take it as a prophecy and I say amen to that. Then he say, let's pray about this. So he start to pray. Then I pray about it. I pray for space. Then I pray for sign. I don't just pray only, you know, I say, Tiki, one, no, I pray for sign. Eh. <laughs> ah. So, you know, I pray. I pray for my secret number. Okay? I remember I prayed. So, I prayed. I prayed for 517. What is 517? By the way, my gallery is 517 Private Limited. Okay? So, why 517? It's 2 Corinthians 517. Just now I mentioned, uh, the old has passed, the new has come. When I see that, eh, go to 517. Uh. The old has passed. So I, that was my model verse that I prayed for sign. Then what happened? I told pastor that day, right? After three months, they will start praying, right? The fourth month, I remember. Wow, one morning I go to the studio. My mentor hey, 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 hey. got good news. I said, what good news? Hey, I heard uh, got people want to let go, no, my friend. I said, uh, what's the unit number? First thing I always ask, uh, 417. That's it, 417, my Cornell, don't waste time. 
He said, no, at least for decent people offer, right? Go and take a look. I said, no need to take a look. Lah. Then why? Because I know what I prayed for. Then he said, okay, respect. We continue to pray. Three weeks later, which is the fifth month already. All right. Maple Tree called my mentor. Uh, we have a tenant who wants to move out, you know. I wonder whether you're interested. Same thing, go back, go early in the morning, go to the studio. Lie, 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 got good news. Huh? See me good news. Hey, there are, there's a tenant who wants to move out, no? Ah, what's the unit number? First thing I ask again. 517. Huh? I could call my. Oh, I mean, confirm. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no need to see, confirm. But then uh, when I say that, uh, I regret it already. <laughs> you know why? He said, are you sure you want to confirm? I said, confirm. Uh. Okay. Then he said, are you going to call? No? Then he called, oh yeah, I want now. Regret it already. You know why? Hey, you want to take over a unit? Then what happened? Uh? After we, he confirmed, right? Confirm a date for appointment to go and view. So we sit down and start doing the calculation. Then I calculated, no? For first three months, my sales already surpassed the, the amount. No? Oh, I also never count. Uh. People order, take, order, take. Hey, we count, 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 plus this, minus. Hey, brother, go chun. Eh. Go chun, eh. go chun, chap kui cheng. Eh. Oh, chap kui cheng, I'm not so. Then start to, hey, I never do open a big shop, right? Correct. Then start, okay, by faith. Oh. By faith, that time, I lie there. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, building needs stamping, right? Need down payment. This is what oh, come like, like zero. Kia leo le tio, but pen very fast, ah, you know. <laughs> pay slow lah, but pen very fast, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, that was me. Pen very fast, right? Then again, I was in struggle. Right, reality against uncertainty. What happened? Again, oh, when I struggle, my prayer is, God, the book on what eh? Dear bo, the digital from Red Sea Chaga what I style, you book on what eh? This is my prayer, no? I tell you very, I sometimes I drive this my prayer. God, you you never see me die one. You bring me thus far, you will bring it to pass. Right. Ah, I'm not a theological person, but this is my prayer. <laughs> ah, you bring me from the Red Sea, through the Red Sea, you turn it into red carpet. Leh. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> so that was always my prayer. Then what happened? Wow, well, when one start blessing coming again, people start blessing. Hey, Mary, I heard you want to do this stock yago ban here. Huh? Hey, I cannot pay you, no? No, I never ask you to pay. Eh. Whoa. Then you do already, ah. Uh, the color was you <laughs> correct. First was very fast on uh. Now well, enjoy that. Eh. <laughs> correct. You know, right? If people can't bless and the blessing keeps pouring in, no? It's not about my glory, huh? Please. There's nothing to boast about this. Eh. It's just people come. 50,000 for you. Whoa. Then the moment for the launch, so I painted a whole series, right? People come, oh, I take this too. Whoa, another 50,000. <laughs> Whoa. Then paint bo xiang liao ma. Right? The color more vibrant already. <laughs> right? Then one year later, I not only I have surpassed, one year later, huh? All right, my first car, I remember, uh, for information. My first car, I remember last time I stayed in Shuma. If I want to go to Commonwealth, uh, my studio is in Commonwealth. All right, people will take from Commonwealth to Amokyo, of Tremont. I go to Bali on. From Yishun to Woodland, Woodland, then one big round, then to Commonwealth. No? So, always one big round, right? Now, in my train, uh, in the train, I remember. Wow, I, I wish I get a car, no? Right. Do you think I pray? I never pray la. I say, God. Lei hao zhou lang. Tiao, lei hao zhou lang. I don't know la. I pray the way ah. Okay, this is my prayer. Lei hao zhou lang eh ho. 
Tio, you see my need, you will provide Tio. Ah, then one fine day, one guy who I counsel one, ah, hey Barry, I have four cars, eh? I have five cars in. I'm not driving, eh? <laughs> the first person eh? he asked me what by the way eh? I don't beg from people one, no? when I was inside I read a verse that says I have never seen the righteous or the children of the righteous beg this verse when I read this verse uh, whoa, I see uh, hey, I've seen myself all the while in my life I've been begging and begging ma. because why Inside prison, you want to go to the toilet, I have to ask permission. Eh. See, boy, I beg. Want to glue this? Ah, sir, can I go? Also, my spec, ma. Quite a sim check, ma, ma, right? <laughs> All right. I have to see my OC. OC, I want to draw this. Can I have permission? Also, I have to beg, no? So, I, when I see this, I tell myself, I'll never beg again. Because I've never seen a ch- children of the righteous beg. Whoa. It's not that I howl yet, no, no. Till date, I never asked someone, hey, you want to support me painting, bro? Never. Orders just keep came coming in. Is it, is it that I'm good? No. God is good. Amen. Amen. God is very good. All the time. Amen. Huh? So what happened? <laughs> Not that I have surplus. Then one year later, I was thinking, I remember I made a trip to Bandung, Indonesia, to see a ceramic Benelli. On the train from Jakarta to three and a half hours, lying down on the, all right, the chair, listening to worship song and asking for direction. Then, you think I see vision? No, I only see one word, education. I say, huh? Education. Primary six. How to educate people. I've been being educated for 40 over years of my life. Eh. Right. How to educate people? So I come back. I don't know how. Right. I tell myself, okay, I want to start teaching already. Teach what? Then I got no syllabus, no NIE train, not NAFA. Teach what? I say, God, where to find a student? <laughs> then, student. One by one, keep coming in. One by one, keep coming in. Coming up, my painting do less, teaching more. And then what happened? When I look at that one whole, almost one year, I see, hey, 10 of my students, right? 9 out of 10, suicide tendency. Youth, self-mutilation. Children as young as primary 5, primary 6. Want to jump down because of academic youth. Wanted to be someone, wanted to be accepted, but the parents felt that the parents rejected them, cut themselves. Want to seek attention. Seniors, huh? I have seniors start to feel, right? Especially mothers, right? Especially mothers start to feel their children are drifting. The children don't talk to them anymore. Until I remember oh, there's one <laughs> one young gentleman, 20 over years, 20 over years old. Mother one day texts me, Hey Barry, can you tell my son to do this? Uh, how come he talk to you more than he talk to us? Uh? I cannot complain also. <laughs> right. Then I talk to the mother. I trace, I talk to the mother. As Young to the old. Then I find, oh, how come? Uh, how c- me got nothing, right? Don't know, no, no education, no syllables prepared, nothing. But how can I teach art? You think I teach art? No, I use art to reach out to them. That's my purpose, I find. Right? Amen. Then, <coughs> what happened? This year, throughout this period, I've been doing what I'm doing. Right, this year, again, seeking for direction. God showed me, right? Only one word, same. Where your foot, where you set foot is, yeah? There shall be your territory. Then, I start to travel. So I start traveling. So today, I'm not only into teaching, 
not into into fine art or create uh, commissioning work. All right. Okay, this is my work. Eh? This is my studio. Okay. All right. Then I have been invited. Uh, to be. Uh, this is my second TED talk already. So I've been invited to, uh, to give motivations talking us uh, speech. Not remember the place I went, uh, boys' home, detention barrack, RTC. Uh, all this right. Uh, God, there unique again. He bring me back to all these places to give talks. <laughs> I remember when I went to detention barrack. Hey, I sleep in this cell. No, I remember. Right. Oh, not only that. I'm also a prison volunteer. Four and a half years I released, right? I I'm an artist mentor for uh, the place where I do art, remember? Now I'm the artist mentor there for four years plus. Okay. Not only that, okay, I'm also a volunteer uh, in WeCare Community Service. WeCare is a non-profit organization that reach out to recovery addicts. Addictions in all form. Pornography, all right, pornography, sex, uh, Drugs, alcohol, gambling. I've volunteered there for more than three years. Okay. Uh, then I also do workshops. Okay. Uh, these are my students, some of my students. Okay. I also do use art to reach out to the community. Uh, uh, this, okay. Then where, my, where I set foot is, there shall be my territory. So I go as far as uh, this. By the way, anyone say I'm okay? Ah, uh, uh, if you go to Amokyo Central, oh, you see this, right? Then you see me. <laughs> okay, I painted the whole Amokyo Central. Uh, more than one kilometer. Uh, and from zero, no education, no saving, no shelter. I was engaged by Amokyo Central, right? Merchant, as the art director to revamp the whole Amokyo Central. Huh? Alright, so uh, after New Year, three more paintings. Two on the leaf, one on another one on the floor. Then as far then I go travel uh, internationally. Okay, this is one in Turkey. Okay, I paint in Turkey, two times in Turkey I painted. Uh, this is 3D anamorphic that I painted in Amokyo. This is a private one. Uh, this is the newspaper. Amokyo got burned there. The Hong Tou Ching Pian, Hei Tou Ching, right? <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to paint that again. Okay, uh, this Turkey was publicized in uh, many media. All right, even this is one of the radio interview. All right. Uh, so before I end my sharing, all right, for those who felt that your life is without color, uh, tasteless, but you know you're breathing, but you know. I'm breathing, but I'm not leaving. I just want to end this with you. Right? As long as you have breath, you have hope. All right? As long as you have breath, you have hope. People will tell you, don't give up. Right? People will tell you, uh, give you a lot of suggestion. To me, I don't give suggestion. One. All right? But give you a solution. What's my solution? See the bird. That's my solution. See the bird. Let your breath return in praises and in glory. That's my prayer for you. Amen. Thank you very much. Come on, give a round of applause to God. Can I invite the worship team? I do not know what the Lord has laid in your hearts. I do not know the journey and the questions, the challenges that you may face. Perhaps there are some of us feel that our life is like a white canvas, empty. Nothing done, nothing accomplished. Or perhaps the white canvas is a, is a symbol, is a reflection of really a life seems wasted. Hope, dream, dash. Nothing Im amount to nothing. But there are some of us perhaps going through and think back of our own life and say, what does my life amount to? It's just an endless pursuit 
of whatever that will never return to me. You know what? The scripture tells us the very Creator God whose words spoken bring to existence. White canvas, He can paint it with the kind of colours the world cannot provide. And today we have a life of a brother. I don't think he's white canvas, he's black canvas. <laughs> but you know what? God never stopped running after him. So I believe that as he sends to this, this afternoon that there's a certain heaviness, mothers, perhaps it's a good time for us, whether you're mothers or your son, wherever we are, we have always have parents. And for those who are married with children, we know we have children. So maybe tonight, to this afternoon, is to just come before the Lord and say, God, I come with you with an open palm. All I have, Lord, you use it. If it is empty, then God, you place it. Place meaning, purpose, satisfaction. Come, let us rise. says here, how long O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the days? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? How long O oh Lord, how long O oh Lord, and perhaps if there are some of us going through the seasons where we find no answer or looking at the door and know that there is no future or whatever the situation may be, the Lord is speaking to you. The Lord is speaking to you. And the psalmist later on in asking the questions begin to taste life. And this is what the psalmist himself cry out and answer in response. And he says this, O oh Lord my God, light up my eyes. Light up my eyes. He says, light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. While life has no hope of a future, 
you know, it makes a difference in how you see perspective. And the psalmist cries out at the point in time and says, "But I ask how long, but I see no blackness, you know, there's no light in that all. Light up my eyes so that I may see. And this is what he says subsequently. He says, But I have turned in your steadfast love, and my heart shall rejoice in your salvation, and I will sing to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord. You know, people of God, as we go through whatever it is, when we get our perspective right, a blank canvas can be beautiful. And this, the psalmist in closing says, because He has dealt bountifully with me. That a God will never bring you to existence to let, be, let you suffer indefinitely. That is never from God. But you know what? Despite the, all the pains and all the imperfections of life, the very God who created you and birthed you into existence, He says, I will give you life abundantly. If there's some of us today have not received the Lord, then today I want you to receive life. Life from the life giver. Because He who dies and raised from the days, He is able to give you life abundantly. And you have never tasted life or experienced life, I want to challenge you today. Why not give God a try? And see how your life will change. If there's some of us who are going through whatever situation, perhaps with the open palm before you, and say, Oh Lord, I have never tasted what it means to experience your goodness. Whether in all, whatever dimensions, situation or persons or whatever context you may be. And say, Oh Lord, this is the empty palm I come. And Lord, you place on my palm all that, the goodness that you have for me. So that when I come to you again into your house, it will not be, be with empty palm, but it will be with an uplift palm so that I may worship you and praise you. As the psalmist says this, I will sing to the Lord because He has dwelt past then, meaning bountifully with me. So, can you join with me in faith on that? Come let us. As you come before the Lord and I'll create this space and time for you to pray to the Lord. If you have never received Jesus into your life, then say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you. I want to thank you for you are the maker and the giver of life. I acknowledge you as the Lord and Saviour of my life. Jesus, take your rightful place. And as you have promised, give me life abundantly. I repent of all my sins. I renounce of all my ways and bring transformation in my life. In Jesus' name. And whatever the Lord speaks to you, and as you sing the songs, make it a prayer to Him.
Lord, Father God, we leave unto you all that is rest on our hearts. And we know, O oh God, that you are the God who promised and is faithful and that you will surely do it. And Lord, we know the tears that we shed, that God, you, you, you bottled it up, you, you collected in the bottle. For every tears means something to you. So, Lord Father, we've yielded life and surrendered life. God, we give unto you as a piece of a white canvas. For, O oh Lord, you are the author and the perfecter of faith. And, O oh God, Lord, you, you take your brush and paint our life. So that, Lord Father, the watching world will look into our life and marvel, marvel at your masterpiece. Because the Lord of the create, creations painted us. So, Lord Father, we just want to pray that, God, you will, you will restore, restore your glory and move us from glory to glory. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Everybody say, Amen. Can we, can we close in the ironic prayer? I need your help. <laughs> Upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you.